Welcome back everyone. In this lecture uh, we will continue to study uh, the basis of a root system and uh, we saw a, we saw the existence of a basis in the last class. So, in this class actually I will prove that uh, the basis will arise as pi of gammas for some gamma regular. Okay, let us recall what we have done before and then I will uh, continue uh, with, the, with the result. So, recall we define what is called this uh, uh, wild chambers which are connected components of this uh, E difference union P alpha alpha and phi. So, we looked at this union P alpha alpha and phi and then the complement of that which we called this E minus union P alpha alpha and phi. Then we realize this can be written as union of connected components. So, this is uh, union of connected components and those connected components we called wild chambers. Okay. So, then uh, what we realized, so if we take some gamma inside uh, this uh, complement which we call it regular element okay so let gamma is being element of v which is not in this union of p alpha alpha and phi so that means this is a regular element so then we saw that this gamma is indeed separates uh, this uh, pi into two disjoint sets one is pi plus of gamma which is those beta in phi such that beta of gamma is positive and then you have this phi minus of gamma which is just minus of phi plus of gamma. So, then we saw that minus phi plus of gamma and phi plus of gamma is going to be exactly phi and you have this pi of gamma which is subset of phi plus of gamma consisting of indecomposable elements from this phi plus of gamma and we saw that this form a base of phi. So, this is what we proved so far. So, now what we want to do? We want to prove that all the bases of this uh, phi arises in this way only. That means, so, given a base, so let pi be a base of phi. So, then there exist gamma which is regular from E minus union P alpha alpha in phi such that this pi of gamma is going to be exactly pi. So, this is the theorem that we want to prove. Okay. So, the, this proves that the set of all bases, the set of all, all bases of phi are nothing but just pi of gamma where gamma runs over all these regular elements. Note that, so there are only finitely many bases are possible because pi itself is finite. So, that means there are lots of identification that happens between pi gamma. So, pi gamma will be equal to pi gamma dash. Uh, for many many elements we will determine later when this happens okay so how one actually uh, approaches this so for this purpose uh, first uh, let's use the definition of pi so pi is being a base so that actually uh, tells us that pi first of all uh, must be basis so once we give basis then we can actually take uh, intersection of this positive open half basis associated with the basis and we can see that this intersection must be non avoid so what i mean by that so let's uh, let's look at uh, uh, these elements of pi let's label them okay so let's say uh, you have pi so which you, which you label them as alpha 1 etc alpha l where L is the rank of phi which is dimension of phi. 
okay. So, now once you have this uh, elements alpha 1 etcetera alpha L. So, now you can define this positive open off spaces asso associated with this space okay what is that. So, you take uh, some subset of E so which is collection of all x such that x comma alpha i is positive for all i 1 to L. So, this is the intersection of so, this is the intersection of all this positive open off spaces associated with elements of pi. Okay. So, our climb is actually this is non empty. So, we claim that so this must be non empty. So, this is actually can be proved easily okay I will just sketch a proof I will leave it to you to check. So, check that if we take delta i be the projection of uh, uh, this alpha i on the orthogonal complement of the subspace spanned by all basis vectors except alpha i. So, then you can take okay what is delta i so this is the projection okay you take the projection of alpha i where on the orthogonal complement on the orthogonal complement of the subspace span by all basis elements except alpha i that means all alpha j where j is not equal to i. So, then you can consider this gamma which is summation some r i delta i where i range from 1 to l where r i is positive. So, then you can prove that this gamma must be there inside this intersection. Okay. So, let me call it capital A. So, this must be inside this capital A. You can directly compute uh, this gamma comma alpha i and then you can see that what happens. Okay. Let us do it now. So, let us say gamma alpha i. So, that is going to be exactly equal to summation r i delta okay, r j delta j alpha i and then where j range from 1 to l. Now, since this delta i is the projection of alpha i on the orthogonal complement of the uh, subspace span by this. So, that means this delta i will be orthogonal to alpha j for all j not equal to i. So, that means the only thing that lives here is summation actually uh, all this delta j alpha i will be 0. So, then what do you get exactly equal to uh, r i delta i alpha i. Since delta i is the projection of alpha i on the orthogonal complement you can see that this must be non-zero and this is also must be positive. So, that forces that this gamma of alpha i is positive for all i range from 1 to n. So, this is simple construction that tells us that this intersection of this positive open of, of spaces associated with any basis must be non empty. But geometrically you can see that all these uh, positive off spaces they will have actually measure infinite. Okay. If we take this finitely many of them and then intersect you will still have uh, measure infinite uh, open subset. Okay. This is going to be open subset and this will be convex open subset that is not hard to see. So, now how one uses this. Uh, so, now you can go back to uh, our pi okay, that pi that we have inside phi. So, then uh, you can use this earlier observation and then choose gamma inside E such that this gamma of alpha is actually positive for all alpha in pi. So, this can be done using our earlier observation. 
So, now uh, you can see that uh, since phi is actually uh, sorry pi is a base inside phi uh, you can see that uh, uh, this gamma must be regular okay using B2 and pi is base we get gamma is regular. So, what is the meaning of that? That means gamma comma beta is non-zero for all beta inside phi. Okay. So, now since gamma is regular one can actually define what is called uh, phi plus of gamma that is those beta in phi such that beta gamma is positive. Now, you can see that pi by definition satisfies uh, this gamma alpha positive for all alpha in pi. So, that implies pi is sits inside phi plus of gamma and note that phi plus is with respect to pi uh, all these uh, elements of phi plus will be non-negative integral linear combination of elements of pi. So, that forces that this pi sits inside phi plus and this phi plus sits inside phi plus of gamma and this also again forces that uh, phi minus sits inside phi uh, minus of gamma which is minus phi plus of gamma. So, that implies that using the cardinality argument you can see that phi plus must be exactly equal to phi plus of gamma as phi plus is just going to be the cardinality of phi plus is going to be cardinality of phi divided by 2 which is same as cardinality of phi plus of gamma. Okay. So, that forces that this phi plus must be equal to phi plus of gamma. So, now since pi sits inside this phi plus which is equal to phi plus of gamma. So, you can see that this pi is naturally elements of pi of gamma. Now, since the cardinality of pi is same as cardinality of pi of gamma as both of them are basis. So, both of them are basis of capital E. So, you can conclude that pi must be equal to pi of gamma. Okay. So, this actually tells us that uh, if we start with uh, pi which is a base, so then there exists gamma regular such that pi of gamma equal to pi. So, that means all the elements of all the elements of uh, bases must come from this pi of gamma for some gamma regular. So, this is kind of motivates us to understand uh, what happens if you vary gamma uh, over this set E difference union P alpha. So, let us try to understand that. Okay. But before that let us make some observations about uh, the connection between the uh, simple roots and the positive roots it generates. Okay. So, you start with pi which is sitting inside let us say phi. So, then we just observe that pi must be equal to pi of gamma for some gamma which is regular which is in uh, E difference union P alpha alpha in phi. So, then what we observed we also observed that th there is this phi plus of gamma. So, that one can define. So, that is going to be exactly phi plus. So, now it is easy to see okay, it is easy to see that pi equal to or pi of gamma equal to pi of gamma dash if and only if this phi plus of gamma must be equal to phi plus of gamma dash. So, this is not hard to see. Okay. So, in particularly uh, you can also see that in this case this, uh, uh, this gamma and gamma dash. So, they both lie on the same side of the hyperplanes P alpha. So, this is happens if and only if gamma and gamma dash lie on the same side of each hyperplane P alpha alpha in phi. And this happens if and only if this uh, chamber that is defined by gamma must be same as the chamber defined by gamma dash. 
so that means if gamma and gamma dash if they come from same while chambers okay so then the corresponding pi of gamma pi of gamma dash must be same and as well as this phi plus of gamma and phi plus of gamma dash must be same since there are only finitely many of them you can see that there are only finitely many of these while chambers so if we fix some base uh, then the chamber that are uh, that is corresponding to that fixed uh, base will be called uh, fundamental while chamber okay we fix a base pi of phi so then we know that so there is this chamber that actually corresponds to pi so in particularly pi will be pi of gamma and then you have this chamber corresponding to this gamma so which we just define to be uh, the so this we take it to be the chamber corresponding to pi and this we call it fundamental chamber so that means we are working with one fixed base now okay this is we call it fundamental chamber Okay, so what we have done now, so we have actually made connection between this set of all bases, so set of all bases that you take of phi and then from this we have natural way to go from the set of all positive roots of this phi and then from here we can go to the set of all chambers of e, okay while chambers so note that once phi plus is given okay so then it must contain a unique base in it okay so this correspondence is actually one to one correspondence so going from a base to its uh, positive roots okay so this is a one to one similarly going from uh, this uh, positive roots to the chamber so that is also is actually a one to one correspondence okay so we will see like uh, if this is phi plus of gamma so then naturally we are sending this to c of gamma so which is we denoted by c of pi so this is also a one to one correspondence so these are all something we already checked implicitly so we i just uh, uh, leave it to you to check very explicitly so this statement you check so now uh, you can see that uh, there is a while group acting on capital e and this while group will naturally act on the set of all while chambers because the while group is naturally acting on this uh, p alphas okay so you can see that the while group w acts on this union p alpha alpha in phi because the while group acts on this capital phi and in particularly it acts on all the hyperplanes perpendicular to roots of phi okay so that forces that this while group naturally acts on this complement e minus union p alpha alpha in phi okay because this is w invariant so its complement is also w invariant since w actually isometry on each element of w acts as isometry element on e so that says that uh, the connected components of this uh, e minus union p alpha should be mapped to connected component so in particularly w acts on the set of while chambers the set of while chambers so not only that uh, you can e see that easily if pi is a base then if you take w and w then w pi also must be a base so this is some easy exercise i will leave it so if w in w and pi is a base of phi so then w of pi that also must be a base of phi so that means w acts on the set of bases so w acts on the 
set of bases. So, now you it is not hard to see the way the W acts on this wild chamber. Suppose if you take the wild chamber to be C gamma and then W is in W, then the W naturally maps this C gamma to just C of W gamma. So, this is something very easy to check. It is enough to check it for reflections. For reflection, this is just obvious because W just isometry. Okay, if gamma uh, some x is positive, then you can see that uh, W gamma W x is also positive. Okay. So here C gamma uh, is actually is those elements uh, gamma such that. Uh, so, they all lie in the one side of the each hyperplane. So, you can see that uh, there is a way to actually define uh, C gamma. So, this is something I will leave it as leave it you to check. So, here the exercise. So, C gamma is also has this uh, other way of expressing. So, you collect those gamma dash inside E such that gamma gamma dash both lie on the same side of the each hyperplane P alpha okay, for all alpha in phi. But if you take element that is coming from phi plus of gamma, you can see that gamma alpha must be positive. So, that means gamma and gamma dash must be on the positive side of this P alpha where alpha coming from phi plus of gamma. So, that actually gives another definition of C gamma. So, this is those gamma dash in E such that gamma dash alpha must be positive for all alpha coming from phi plus of gamma. So, this is one different. So, because phi plus of gamma is uniquely determined uh, by gamma. So, you can call it phi plus. So, that phi plus actually defines what is this C gamma. Okay. From this you can see that if you apply uh, W on C gamma then you get uh, C W gamma. So, that is also not hard to prove. So, now uh, we also seen that if uh, pi is pi of gamma, so then if you apply w on pi then what happens you can see that w of pi of gamma. So, because that is inside uh, uh, again it is a base and, uh, and you it is not hard to see using the action of uh, this uh, w on this wild chambers. Okay, this maybe I will leave it as exercise. Again, if you think about the definition, so then you get so W of pi will be equal to W of pi of gamma if pi equal to pi of gamma. Okay, so then you can see that this must be exactly equal to pi of W of gamma as W of C gamma is same as C of W gamma. Okay. So, that proves that W of pi of gamma is exactly equal to pi of W gamma. So, this is the way W is going to act on all this set of bases. Okay. Similarly, one can actually get the action of action on the phi plus gamma. So, on phi plus gamma also it is going to be W of phi plus of gamma will be exactly phi plus of w gamma. So, this is how w is going to act on the set of uh, uh, positive roots. So, that means, so the one to one correspondence that you have among all these sets. So, these one to one correspondence respects the action of w. So, this, this uh, one to one correspondence respects the action of W on each set. Okay. So, this is very, very important observation. Now, let us actually uh, use these observations uh, and then actually uh, get uh, more information about the set of positive roots and so on. So, ultimately what we want to prove, uh, we will prove that uh, the action that we have on the set of bases. So, that will be actually simply transitive action. Okay. In particularly uh, this W acting on this uh, wild chambers again it will be simply transitive action. 
So in particularly we can actually talk about uh, the fundamental domain for the action of W inside E. So that can be identified with uh, this uh, C of pi bar. Okay, so that is our ultimate goal. So what are what are all our goals? Let me write it so that we will not be lost. So the very first goal, so that W acts on the set of bases or equivalently the set of wild chambers in a simply transitive fashion. So that means if we take any two bases, so that must be W conjugate. So very explicitly if delta, so let me call it pi, pi and pi dash both are bases of phi. So then there exists W and this W is actually unique W in W such that W pi must be equal to pi dash. Okay. So, this is what simply transitive action and the second goal we will see that so we can talk about the fundamental domain for the action of W on V. So, we will prove that this C of pi bar. So, this is the fundamental domain. So, this is the fundamental domain for the action of W on capital E. Again what is the meaning of that? So that means so if you look at uh, the, the, the union of W conjugates of this set that must be exactly E. So E must be union of W conjugates of uh, this uh, set C of pi bar where W in W and if we take uh, sigma lambda equal to mu for some sigma in W, uh, then in particularly like so this, so this, co this conjugation must be unique. So in a way if sigma lambda equal to lambda uh, for some for some lambda in this C pi bar and sigma in W, then that should give us sigma to be identical on E. Okay. So, this is the meaning of uh, this is the fundamental domain for the action of uh, W on E. Okay, let us do these things uh, slowly. So, this, these are all our goals now. So, to prove that uh, W actually permutes the basis of phi, uh, we need to actually uh, uh, prove the following. Okay. So, we will indeed uh, work with some smaller group and then later we will prove that that smaller group is indeed uh, entire W. So, what is that smaller group? Again that is also maybe one can, one can put it in the goal. So, we will prove that this W is indeed generated by reflections corresponding to the base pi. Okay. We already know by definition W is uh, subgroup of GL of E generated by all reflections corresponding to roots of uh, roots that is uh, elements of phi. But this pi is actually a smaller subset. Already you can you can uh, divide okay, because pi is equal to pi plus of gamma disjoint union my minus pi plus of gamma, you can see that W is actually given by uh, subgroup generated by S alpha, alpha coming from phi plus of gamma. So, this is easy, but we will prove that in very strong statement that W is indeed generated by what is called the simple reflections. So, these are called simple reflection because these are all reflections corresponding to the simple roots alpha. So, so this is something very strong condition that we make. Okay. So, indeed uh, we prove that if we take W dash to be uh, this subgroup, uh, then that uh, subgroup indeed 
acts on this set of bases simply transitively. So, that is uh, going to help us to prove uh, indeed this subgroup is exactly equal to W. Okay, let us uh, prove this. So, here is the theorem. So, we fix bases. So, let pi be a base of V. Okay. So, then what we want to prove? We want to prove that if you take any other base, so then uh, that must be W conjugate to this pi. But we know that any other base will be just uh, uh, pi of gamma for some gamma regular. So, then given uh, that pi of gamma, if you prove that pi of W gamma is just this pi, then we are done. Okay. So, our, uh, so let us let us prove this. So, here is the first statement if gamma is E and gamma is regular. So, we want to prove there exists some W in W such that this W gamma inner product with alpha. So, this is going to be positive. for all alpha in pi. Okay. So, that means what? Uh, that means, so this W is fixed. Okay. So, this W gamma, let, let us call it gamma dash. Okay. Then gamma dash alpha is positive for alpha in pi. So, this says, so this implies immediately uh, that uh, pi of W gamma is nothing but just pi because this pi is uh, uniquely determined by uh, this thing. Okay. So, if we go back uh, to the definition of uh, uh, this pi. So, pi will be exactly equal to uh, some pi of gamma dash. Okay. But what is that gamma dash? That gamma dash is chosen to be uh, gamma dash such that the inner product gamma dash alpha must be positive for all alpha in pi. Okay. So, now uh, from that you can conclude that pi of w of gamma must be equal to this pi of gamma dash which is pi. Okay. So, in particularly uh, the while group acts transitively on the while chambers. So, this implies the while group acts transitively on while chambers. So, that is again on the basis. Okay. Okay. So, what is the second statement? Again it is uh, it says the same thing. Okay. So, if we take uh, pi dash to be another base, so then there exist Okay, uh, w such that uh, pi dash w w of pi dash will be exactly pi. Okay, from this we can conclude. So that is the second statement. So given pi dash, so which is exactly pi of gamma, there exists w in w such that w of pi of gamma is exactly pi. The third statement, if alpha is just a root, so then you can prove that there exists W and W such that W of alpha is going to be element of your pi. So, that means uh, each element of pi is conjugate to some simple root. The fourth statement it says 
W is indeed generated by S alpha alpha coming from pi. The fifth statement it says if some W fixes pi for some W in W then we must have W equal to identity on E. So, this says W acts simply transitively on the set of basis. Okay. So, to prove this uh, what we do we just take this W dash which is the subgroup of W generated by all the simple reflections. So, right now we do not know whether it is equal to W or not, but later we will deduce that it must be equal to W. So, for the first statement you can see that if we take uh, this set of uh, positive roots. Okay. So, that uh, will be actually given by uh, so okay so here is the uh, small exercise that is aside so if we take this positive roots that are defined by uh, this pi so this is the positive roots okay defined by pi so then one can prove that if we take uh, this alpha in pi so, then S alpha pi plus difference alpha. So, this should be exactly equal to pi plus difference alpha. So, that means this S alpha actually permutes all the positives other than alpha. So, indeed we know that S alpha of alpha will be minus alpha. So, that means this S alpha sends alpha to its negative. So, so that means uh, it cannot be like part of this. So, if you remove that alpha from positive roots then you can conclude that this, this S alpha just permutes all the positive roots. So, now uh, what we do we just write delta to be this uh, half sum of positive roots where alpha coming from phi plus. Okay. So, then what we can do we can actually choose sigma that is coming from W dash such that uh, this sigma gamma delta that must be as picas as possible. Okay. So, choose sigma coming from W dash. So, such that the sigma gamma comma delta. So, that is maximum possible. Okay. This is as big as possible. Okay. So, how one can choose that because W dash is being a finite subgroup of W. So, one can just look at all this uh, sigma gamma delta. Okay. So, since this gamma is regular, so you can see that uh, this uh, sigma gamma delta. So, that must be, uh, so let us calculate and see what happens. So, sigma of gamma delta, so that is going to be exactly equal to gamma times sigma delta. Okay. This gamma is being uh, regular, uh, you can uh, see that, okay. so it does not matter whether it is 0 or non 0, but since when, when uh, sigma runs over W dash, the sigma gamma will be only finitely many. So, then uh, you can compute this inner product sigma gamma delta and then you can choose maximum possible there is no issue. Okay. So, that is fine. So, now uh, let us look at this alpha simple root. So, then for alpha in pi you can see that this S alpha must be in W dash. So, in particularly S alpha sigma that should be inside W dash. Okay. So, now for the choice of sigma what happens? So, the sigma gamma delta. So, this is going to be bigger than sigma 
s alpha sigma times sigma of gamma times delta. So, that is going to be smaller than this ok. Sigma gamma delta must be greater than or equal to s alpha sigma gamma gamma delta. So, let us compute this then we get sigma of gamma delta greater than or equal to sigma of gamma s alpha of delta, but s alpha of delta what it is since delta is of sum of alpha where alpha positive. So, then s alpha of delta will be exactly equal to of sum of summation alpha sorry let us call it beta because s alpha we are applying. So, let us take this to be beta. So, this is uh, beta, beta positive beta where beta not equal to alpha beta positive plus of alpha we can take. So, now you can see that s alpha of delta is going to be exactly equal to. So, this part of the sum will be preserved by s alpha because s alpha permutes all the positive roots except alpha. So, then that implies that this sum must be permuted among themselves. So, then you get exactly of summation beta, beta not equal to alpha, beta positive. But what happens to this? This is going to be minus alpha by 2. So, this is going to be minus alpha by 2. So, then now you can add 1 alpha by 2 and then subtract 1 alpha by 2. So, then you can see that this plus this going to give us delta and then delta minus alpha. So, that means s alpha of delta is exactly delta minus alpha. So, that implies that sigma gamma delta is greater than or equal to sigma gamma gamma delta minus alpha. So, now if you just calculate, so this implies that sigma gamma alpha must be greater than or equal to 0. Since gamma is regular and sigma permutes all the roots. So, that implies that sigma gamma comma alpha. So, that must be positive. So, this is what we are getting and uh, this is actually true for any alpha positive. So, that is what uh, we proved. So, this proves that the sigma gamma alpha is actually positive for all alpha from pi. But that means what? That means the sigma gamma which is gamma dash. So, this is going to be a regular element and it, if you think about it if then this forces that this pi equal to pi of gamma dash. So, that is how the gamma dash is defined ok because this is what uniquely defines that gamma dash that corresponds to pi. So, this means uh, this sigma since this uh, c of gamma to uh, this c of pi ok. In particularly if you think about it uh, then the sigma actually sends uh, this pi of gamma to pi ok. So, that is what happens. So, that means any two bases they are conjugate under this subgroup w dash. So, in particularly w dash permutes all the wild chambers and it also permutes all the bases. So, now uh, if you want to prove uh, that any root is actually w conjugate to some simple root. So, from uh, this uh, second part you can see that any two bases are conjugate. So, that implies that if given a root is part of a base then we are done ok. So, let us prove C. So, to what is C? If alpha is a root, so then we want to prove that there exists w in w such that w of alpha is actually again inside pi. So, there are actually many ways to prove this results. So, let, let me give at least two proofs. So, one proof just uses induction ok, induction on the height of alpha. So, what we can do given alpha in phi you can write that alpha as some integral linear combination of elements from pi either with non negative coefficients or non positive coefficients. So, now given this alpha, so if you write summation k beta beta 
where beta is coming from pi. So, you know that this k betas are either non negative in integers or non positive integers. So, then you can define what is called this height of alpha with respect to pi. So, that is going to be just sum of all this k betas, betas coming from pi. Now, by inducting on this height, you can you can prove this result. So, let us prove this by induction. Okay. So, maybe I will leave it to you to prove this, this is uh, simple. Okay. So, use induction on this height of alpha and prove that there exists w n w dash such that w of alpha is in pi. Okay. So, this is something easy not that hard. So, let us now prove that uh, in other way uh, the same result. So, in order to prove uh, this alpha indeed um, w conjugate to some simple root, what we are going to do? We are going to say that this alpha is indeed part of some basis. So, what is our claim? Claim is alpha is inside some delta of sorry some pi of gamma dash for some gamma dash which is regular. Okay, so, how one can do this? So, for that purpose let us look at uh, the hyperplanes okay, uh, p beta. So, they are all actually uh, distinct from p alpha when beta is actually runs over uh, elements of pi. Okay. So, what we do? Uh, we indeed uh, uh, take this alpha. So, the only uh, roots that are proportional to alpha are plus or minus alpha. So, in particularly uh, this p beta okay, when beta is not equal to plus or minus alpha. So, this these are all okay, these planes are all distinct from distinct from p alpha. Okay. So, in particularly this uh, p alpha cannot be written as uh, okay, or p alpha cannot lie inside this union p beta where beta is not equal to plus or minus alpha. So, if, if it is the case then what happens then p alpha can be written as union of p alpha intersection p beta, but note that p alpha intersection p beta it will have dimension 1 less than dimension of p alpha. So, that forces that p alpha can be written as union of finitely many proper subspaces. So, that is observed. So, that is why this p alpha cannot be contained in union p beta where p beta not equal to alpha. So, then what one can do? One can choose this gamma dash inside uh, your uh, while chamber. So, that is actually let us say closer to this hyperplane p, p alpha. So, you have this hyperplane. So, which is uh, p alpha. Okay. So, this gamma which is regular element sorry gamma dash which is regular element. So, that is closer to this p alpha, but it actually kind of stays away far from other hyperplanes because all other hyperplanes there are only finitely many. So, because there are only finitely many hyperplanes which are like uh, there inside uh, this E. So, you can see that one can talk about distance between these two hyperplanes. Okay. So, given p alpha p beta one can talk about uh, kind of uh, so distance means distance with respect to let us say the inner product. So, what I want to climb so okay, maybe you can check yourself. So, this is not that hard. So, you can choose this gamma uh, such that which is uh, close enough to sorry you can choose gamma dash uh, that is close enough to gamma. So, gamma is also regular element. Okay. So, which is already uh, uh, taken to be okay, sorry gamma we will just fix gamma which is inside your p alpha, but gamma is not in p beta for all beta not equal to plus or minus. 
So, that means this gamma is somewhere here. So, with respect to this gamma, so we choose this gamma dash that is close to this gamma. Okay. So, this is close n of 2 gamma. So, that if you take inner product with gamma dash gamma alpha, so that is some epsilon which is positive. So, this gamma dash is not lying on the hyperplane, it is lying on the positive side of the hyperplane. So, while if you compute this gamma dash with beta, okay, the absolute value of that, that is bigger than epsilon. Okay. So, this is somewhat closer to uh, gamma. So, now with respect to gamma, you can actually look at all possible gamma dash uh, gamma gamma. So, that uh, inner product you can look at. So, this uh, uh, r alpha will be just uh, line that is perpendicular to this hyperplane. So, now using this information you can choose this gamma dash that satisfies these two properties. So, then evidently you can see that this alpha must lie inside pi of gamma dash because alpha must be indecomposable. So, because if it is written as uh, sum of some beta 1 plus beta 2, you can see that then gamma dash of alpha will be exactly equal to gamma dash comma beta 1 plus gamma dash comma beta 2. Now, since this beta 1 beta 2 if they are coming from positive side, so beta 1 comma gamma dash is positive and beta 2 gamma gamma dash that is also positive, then that forces that these two are actually bigger than epsilon and bigger than epsilon, then this should be bigger than 2 epsilon but that is not the case we have chosen so that gamma dash comma alpha is exactly epsilon. So, that forces this alpha to be indecomposable element. So, that means alpha must be inside your pi of gamma dash. So, since there exists w in w such that w of pi of gamma dash is exactly pi that forces that this w alpha is exactly in pi. So, this proves that uh, any root of phi must be w conjugate to some simple root. Okay. So, now we are ready to actually prove uh, w dash is exactly w. So, for that purpose let us start with uh, some alpha inside phi. So, now we know that there exists w in uh, w such that w of alpha inside pi. So, now you can see that let us call this is beta. So, then this S beta is exactly equal to W S alpha W inverse because W S alpha W inverse is given by W of sorry S of W of alpha. So, this proves that uh, this W inverse S beta W which is exactly S alpha so, this is going to be inside your w dash because this w is coming from w dash. Okay. Since s beta is also coming from as w dash is come sorry w is coming from w dash coming from w dash and s beta is again coming from w dash that forces that s alpha is in inside w dash. So, since w is generated by s alpha alpha is in phi, you can see that this is subset of w dash that proves w equal to w dash. So, this indeed proves w is actually generated by all the simple reflection that comes from this pi. So, now what is the last statement? It is about the simply transitive action. So, that is E. So, if w of pi is same as pi, so, then we claim that w must be identity on E. So, how one can prove this? Uh, so, since this w is actually comes from w capital W which is exactly equal to w dash. So, then you can see that w can be written as product of simple reflections and then we take it to be 
product of simple re reflection in, in a minimal way possible. Okay, let us write S alpha of 1 etcetera S alpha t where this S alpha i's they are all simple reflections and this t is minimum possible. Okay. So, then you can see that okay. so this is something uh, easy exercise may be I will do it uh, in the next class. So, one can check easily that if you take w of alpha t, so then that must be negative. Okay. So, but w of pi is equal to pi. So, that means w of alpha t must be positive because this is again inside pi. So, which actually gives this contradiction. So, that forces that this t must be 0. So, that forces that this w must be identity on. So, this proves that uh, w acts on this uh, set of bases by simply transitively. Okay, I will st stop here. So, the results that I actually assumed uh, which is two results. So, one is uh, S alpha permutes all the positive roots except alpha and whenever you write W as product of this uh, simple reflection such that T minimal then W of alpha T is negative. So, those results I will prove in next class. Okay, thanks, I will stop here.